Chapter 14. Insight. We hear the phrase test and learn all the time. But how do we actually implement this and keep on incrementally improving what we do over time? And with so much data available to you and your business, where do you possibly start? Ben Oliver from ID Collective says you should begin your insight journey by taking the time to understand your audience. Ben says, my biggest digital marketing tip would be spending some time on audience insights. We spend so much time on the creation and reporting of content, we often overlook the audience we are supposed to be serving in the first place. Given how dynamic the industry is and how quickly audience needs can evolve, it's vital to be conducting audience research every six to 12 months. Some tools I recommend include Facebook Audience Insights. I particularly li like the um, Page Like tab, which provides insights into what other pages your audience follows. Also, Minter. This is a great analysis tool for understanding your Instagram audience. And Affinio. This is one of the most powerful audience insight tools I've come across, although sadly just for Twitter at the moment. Affinio allows you to analyze your Twitter audience or other Twitter audiences by placing them into tribes based on affinity. For example, within your Twitter audience, there may be a subsection that really likes vintage cars. By knowing this, you can serve more precise content, work with better influencers, better manage your media spend, etc. It's not a cheap tool, but one worth looking into. For Glenn Schmelzi from Marketing What's New, there's so much data out there available for free, it would be a mistake not to use it. Well, I'm going to go a little bit uh, back to what has been a mainstay of marketing for a long time, which is tracking and analytics. And while uh, it has been around, I mean, even looking at website analytics, it's been around for over a decade, but recently, we've seen an explosion in the number of ways that we can measure all of this. And I think everyone agrees that there's a big advantage for those of us who use these tools to make our sites better and improve how uh, prospects interact with us going by their clicks. But just as I see it coming into 2017, it's just becoming so democratized and so cheap to be able to do cross device and cross channel tracking uh, looking at user behavior through heat maps or polls or live chat data, taking session recordings, getting more video engagement information, um, matching user data so that you can see uh, what you're giving in a personalized way to the people who've filled in shopping carts or joined your members area or you've cookied elsewhere. Um, form interactions, interactive widget metrics, uh, page load time, seeing now how people tap or swipe or how far they scroll through pages. This is great data. And I think that marketers need to stay up with this. Um, and I say that because uh, we also have a job to make sure that we report on how it's doing to other people. And uh, there are some new tools there. I would encourage everyone to, for example, go into their Google Analytics and go up top right. There's a grid button there. And for people who click on that now, they'll start to see some newer tools in addition to Google Analytics, such as Google Tag Manager. But you'll also see Google Data Studio, a great tool for visualizing and helping tell a story with uh, a very appealing report. So uh, my theme is to point out that the price for many of these things has dropped to zero and it's now ultimately up to us to better measure it. The old saying, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. <laughs> it's still true. And uh, now we can measure exactly what's working on our website and get insights from that and make it an amazing experience for people who um, are coming and interacting with us as marketers and with the marketing messages that we're putting in front of them. Another man keen on evangelizing the value of using data more effectively in businesses is Matt Foreman from Traffica. 
So I think uh, uh, carrying on from the, the previous guest, it's really about using the data that you have in, the, in your business already much more effectively. I think we're all awash and, and drowned with data um, every day as digital marketers, but you know, there's so many free tools and there's so much really low cost compute power and solutions out there now to help you make better use of that data. And to give you a very simple example, um, within Google Analytics, there's, uh, there's some uh, attributes called custom dimensions that you can extend your analytics um, information with and your analytics data with. So just joining up simple things like information from your CRM or from your point of sale system into your Google Analytics account really helps you get a much clearer view of who your customers are, how they're behaving, not just online on your website, but offline as well. So you can start to create segments and understand behavior based on um, all sorts of information. The other really exciting and really powerful thing about doing that is you can then start to use that uh, to target advertising too. So whether that's via creating custom audiences in Google and using that in um, Google AdWords or in Google Display Network or even using Facebook's uh, offline uh, data um, API to actually push data into Facebook, you can start to get very, very precise and specific uh, with your advertising as well, which ultimately leads to a much better customer experience and, and a much better return on investment. So that would be my top tip, make much better use of the data you already have with some very low cost and free tools that are out there and accessible to everyone these days. David Sace from dsace.com believes that although conducting regular audits may be perceived as the less glamorous side of digital marketing, regular audits build strong, solid foundations. I've got to say, it's, it's something a, a little less glamorous than some of the others, but it's, it's auditing. Um, the, the less glamorous side of, of digital marketing, but it's about building those solid foundations. Uh, a complete and detailed audit will give you the, the deeper understanding as to why your site is not generating the traffic that you think it should, or why the, the sales and conversions are not improving in line with your expectations. I generally say for, for any business, uh, a site audit, uh, it should really be a vital part of any marketing strategy. The, the audit should be completed at least every 12, 18 months in full and form part of that, that budget and resources within an organization. Uh, a audit is also a key step before you complete any major change on the website, such as refreshing or full overhauls. And as we've seen this year alone, uh, search engines are continually getting smarter. We're seeing more changes in how they, they work out the search results. And my, my real tip at the end of this is uh, not to just rely on that one big audit that you hopefully get around to doing every year, 18 months or so, but to start looking at these micro audits. And these should really be sort of 10, uh, five, 10 minute overviews, looking at some of the, the key points of your website, diving into some of the, the key elements of Google Analytics, checking those traffic levels, looking at those referrals, especially with the referral spam issues that we've had of, of uh, the recent, well, probably years now. Um, also checking things like Google, Google Search Console. I still see a lot of organizations not really diving into the, some of the details there. And even just, diving in and as a using your website as a user as well so, dive in have a run through do the full customer journey understand what it is they're experiencing as they go through the website and don't forget there's a lot of tools out there that are going to give you some really quick useful information uh, tools such as SEM rush uh, whether it's the free or the paid can give you some real good insights GT metrics and Google page insights can really help with speed and other issues on the website and I think it's it's vital that you know whether it's the quick in-house audit or the larger outsourced it should always be seen in, as an investment and Andy Halliday founder of Indigo Media, believes that there is a lot of value in combining data from different sources. And he says, instead of doing good technical audits, do great technical audits by combining both server log data and crawl data. The weaknesses of one is covered by the other. And he's had some great success in 2016 combining the two together. So don't necessarily rely on just the one source of data. It's just a case of digging deeper to make sure you have the most reliable source or combination of sources from which 
to make your decision. For Damon Gochner, founder at Aspiral, a source of really useful insight is using the Facebook Pixel. So I um, am still shocked by the number of businesses not taking advantage of the free insights that Facebook gives us through audience insights and the ways that businesses aren't using that across the different audiences they have on their businesses. So every new client that we take on, regardless of the engagement, the first thing that we ask to do, and my number one actionable tip for all businesses is make sure that you have the Facebook Pixel on every asset you can pixel so that you can start creating custom audiences and so that you can start segmenting those audiences to learn more about them using audience insights and find out even smarter ways to target those audiences on all your other channels and in your messaging and the video that you produce and the content that you're creating so you can make sure you're speaking to the right audience. Dr. Angela Hausman from Market Maven appreciates that it's possible to get lost in your data nowadays. There's so much of it. And that's perhaps why some marketers choose to ignore it. My top tip is in terms of analytics and, and especially in terms of looking high up in the funnel as you're looking for um, understanding consumer behavior. One of the things I'm seeing that I find really scary is I've seen a number of recent posts in fairly respectable places um, complaining that analytics is ruining marketing. <laughs> and I think, you know, if you look into that more deeply, what you see is that analytics isn't ruining marketing or, or destroying your marketing ability. What it is happening is that we're using dumb analytics. In, in other words, we're doing straight correlation analysis or variations of correlation analysis that have no theory behind them. We're using dumb analytics. And, so, and keep on going, Angela. I just need to mute someone. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you're just going to take big data and you're just going to, in a very unsophisticated way, throw it into basically regression modeling and see what comes out and think that that's something that's going to help your organization, you're absolutely wrong. Um, things, anytime you look at data, and the bigger the data, the more likely you are to find spurious correlations. So when you look at your data, you have to be looking at it with some theory in mind as to what you're looking for and what the variables mean in your data set and how they're likely related to each other. And if you don't do that, yeah, predictive analytics are going to just give you garbage. And if you base your marketing strategy on that, you're going to end up with garbage out. So I guess my tip for 2017 is to not forget your marketing in your marketing <laughs> analytics. Well, Dr. Angela Hausman advises on not forgetting your marketing in your marketing analytics. Ben Tepfer from Adobe cautions on not losing your creativity in your insight. Well, David, my big tip is to add the creative back into marketing. And a lot of companies are doing a great job at um, being creative in, in the things that they do, whether it's um, innovative marketing campaigns um, or whether it is, you know, creating, um, we were just talking about offers and testing offers, whether that's um, creating variations. Um, but marketing has gotten in a lot of companies kind of far away from the creative side of things. It's become a lot about numbers and segments. And of course, those are important, but there's a lot we can do where we can um, add creativity back into it, work with our designers um, and, and influence the marketing process that way, because that's the kind of content that really stands out when I think about like the, the emails that I get on a daily basis. Um, there's so many of them and they're so repetitive and I have no patience for something that's not personalized. It doesn't look good on any device. Um, so there's a really a lot we can do with adding creativity back in and then there's a lot we can do in terms of the velocity and the speed that we actually um, distribute that content right so working closer with our designers so that when something happens um, whether it's or maybe our site's down maybe it's something negative or something maybe it's something positive we sell out of an item before we expected to being able to provide the best content really quickly um, so for 2017 i hope to see a lot of companies um, bringing a lot of creative create creativity into their digital marketing Chapter 14 Insight Summary Insight doesn't just mean diving into your own data. 
It means getting to know as much as possible about your target audience. There's so much free data available. Start with Google Analytics and dive in. Join up your data from your CRM or your point of sale system into Google Analytics. Include regular audits as part of your digital marketing strategy. Combine server log data and crawl data to conduct better technical audits. Make sure you have the Facebook pixel on every asset you can pixel. When you look at your data, you have to be looking at it with some theory in mind. Don't get lost in your data and forget about creativity. You can get your copy of Digital Marketing in 2017, the book, over at digitalmarketingin2017.com. Just scroll down, click on the orange order button, and you can choose from ordering the paperback or the Kindle edition on either Amazon.com or Amazon.co.uk. Then, when you've ordered, come back to digitalmarketingin2017.com to claim your bonuses.